Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. Genesis chapter 40. Sometime later, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt offended their master, the king of Egypt. Pharaoh was angry with his two officials, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker, and he put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard in the same prison where Joseph was confined. The captain of the guard assigned them to Joseph, and he attended them. After they had been in custody for some time, each of the two men, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt, who were being held in prison, had a dream the same night, and each dream had a meaning of its own. When Joseph came into them the next morning, he saw that they were dejected. So he asked Pharaoh's officials who were in custody with him in his master's house, Why do you look so sad today? We both had dreams, they answered, but there is no one to interpret them. Then Joseph said to them, Do not interpretations belong to God. Tell me your dreams. So the chief cupbearer told Joseph his dream. He said to him, In my dream, I saw a vine in front of me, and on the vine were three branches. As soon as it budded, it blossomed, and its clusters ripened into grapes. Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes, squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup, and put the cup in his hand. This is what it means, Joseph said to him. The three branches are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your position, and you will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand, just as you used to do when you were his cupbearer. But when all goes well with you, remember me and show me kindness. Mention me to Pharaoh and get me out of this prison." I was forcibly carried off from the land of the Hebrews, and even here I have done nothing to deserve being put in a dungeon. When the chief baker saw that Joseph had given a favorable interpretation, he said to Joseph, I too had a dream. On my head there were three baskets of bread. In the top basket were all kinds of baked goods for Pharaoh, but the birds were eating them out of the basket on my head. This is what it means, Joseph said. The three baskets are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift off your head and impale your body on a pole, and the birds will eat away your flesh. Now the third day was Pharaoh's birthday, and he gave a feast for all of his officials. He lifted up the heads of the chief cupbearer and the chief baker in the presence of his officials. He restored the chief cupbearer to his position, so that he once again put the cup into Pharaoh's hand. But he impaled the chief baker, just as Joseph had said to them in his interpretation. The chief cupbearer, however, did not remember Joseph. He forgot him. Now, you may recall that Joseph had a couple of prophetic dreams that he shared with his family, and these things got him in trouble. They were accurate. He dreamed that one day his family would bow down to him, that he would be raised into a place of leadership, but without perhaps the wisdom he should have had or he would get as the years went by, Joseph shared these things with his brothers, maybe pridefully, and it upset them. And so they sold him into slavery, into Egypt. And after the initial stay with the captain of Pharaoh's guard, now he's in prison and um, serving in prison as kind of a trustee. He ends up overseeing the new additions to the prison, the butler and the baker, Pharaoh's butler and Pharaoh's baker. And so in verse 1, we read, Sometime later, the cupbearer and baker of the king of Egypt offended their master, the king of Egypt. Pharaoh was angry with his two officials, put them in custody of the captain of the guard in the same prison where Joseph was confined. And so these two men had dreams on the same night, soon after they got incarcerated, Uh, They had dreams, and Joseph noted they were upset and said, what's wrong? And and each of the two men said they had dreams, and the dreams were meaningful, but the dreams were eluding them. In verse 8, we both had dreams, but there is no one to interpret them. Then Joseph said to them these words, do not interpretations belong to God. Now, I want to stop right there, because in the life of Joseph, we see several biblical principles for prophetic dreams. This is one of the first. Do not interpretations belong to God. 
Joseph answered. In other words, the interpretation of prophetic dreams does belong to God. God is the one who interprets. God, through his Holy Spirit, reveals the meaning of dreams. And so Joseph gives the glory to God. He says the interpretation is is available to God, and God will reveal it to him if he so chooses. And then he asked for the baker and the butler to share their dreams. And so um, the first guy goes, the chief cupbearer told his dream. He said to him, in my dream, I saw a vine in front of me, and on the vine were three branches. As soon as it budded, it blossomed, and its clusters ripened into grapes. Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup and put the cup in his hand. Now, notice the imagery. This cupbearer dreamed of images that had to do with his line of work. And so the images were familiar. They were familiar symbols. And so another interpretation or dream interpretation principle is dreams present truth through the use of familiar symbols. So the the Lord will not try to convey something meaning to you in in a symbol that has no significance or you have no understanding of the symbol. In this case, the cupbearer recognized the tools of his trade. You know, there were branches from a vine and uh, wine glasses, and there was wine, and Pharaoh's cup was in his hand, etc. These things were all familiar symbols. But there's another principle revealed, because the Lord revealed his will to this cupbearer in a prophetic dream from his own realm of authority. In other words, he was given a dream concerning his own life. He wasn't given a dream concerning the life of someone else. He wasn't given a dream concerning the nation of of Egypt. He was giving a dream about his own life. And so Joseph interpreted the dream. He said, uh, the three branches are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your position. You will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand just as you used to do when you were his cupbearer. And then uh, the other guy, the baker, wants to get on the deal. He saw this was a a positive interpretation. And so the chief baker also shared his dream. And um, he said, on my head were three baskets of bread. In the top basket were all kinds of baked goods for Pharaoh. But the birds were eating them out of the basket on my head. And so once again, the the dream presented uh, familiar symbols. You know, he's a baker. He had dreams with baskets full of bread. But in this dream, something bad was happening. Birds were eating the the bread out of the basket that was on top of his head. So Joseph gave the interpretation. He said, the three baskets are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will chop off your head and impale your body on a pole, and the birds will eat away your flesh. Now, this is a very horrible interpretation, but it is what it is. And Joseph was able to interpret these things accurately, once again, He said interpretations belong to God, but God showed Joseph the meaning of these two dreams accurately. And so in three days, both of them had a three-day time limit. In three days, Pharaoh had a birthday party, and he restored the chief cupbearer just like he said he would, and he executed the chief baker uh, just like Joseph said he would. And so the interpretations came to pass. But we read in verse 23, the chief cupbearer, however, did not remember Joseph. He forgot him. And so Joseph had said, please, please remember me when these things come to pass to the cupbearer. And the cupbearer did not tell Pharaoh or anyone else about these prophetic dreams just yet. But in the next chapter, they will come to light. And so, Lord, we just acknowledge that you spoke to these men in dreams. And, Lord, we acknowledge that your Bible has many incidents of dreams being the vehicle that you choose to use to speak to mankind, both those who belong to you and those who are outside of the kingdom, like in the case of these two men. Lord, speak to us in dreams. Speak to us and give us the wisdom to recognize the interpretation belongs to you. May we seek you for the interpretation, not the book of the month that claims to have all the insight about dream interpretation. May we seek you, the living God, as the interpreter of our dreams. Lord, as we receive insight from you, show us And let us take these things and uh, have the grace to walk in them according to your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. 
We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.